going to talk more broadly, I think, about what this means. Some of the Royal Institute of International Affairs' most senior researchers were on hand to offer their perspectives on the current situation in Iran following President Mohammad Ahmadinejad's re-election. The issue here, and I think we need to keep focused on it, is the election and Mr. Ahmadinejad. And the question will be, I think, fundamentally at the heart of what many people are saying, is, is further angst, bloodshed, rioting, whatever, worth Mr. Ahmadinejad's continued presidency? We're not talking about the regime. We're talking about the presidency. And that is what is, that is, what is at stake at the moment. Okay? And I think we need to keep... Uh, focused on that, and that's what they will be arguing. This is why, to my mind, for those of you who like historical analogies, it is more similar to what happened in 1906 than what happened in 1978, although obviously the tactics that are being used are very similar to 1978 in terms of civil dis disobedience and other things. I think we're also entering a period now when facts are going to be very, very hard to come by, by the way. Uh, not only their attempts, obviously, to close down uh, foreign news and other broadcasting and internet, but, of course, what that means is, well, back to our standard rumor mill in Iran, and we all know that that works extremely well in the acts of news. I mean, Iranians are very adaptable in this respect, and they will find ways around it. But in this particular environment, if you go back to 78 or earlier, you'll find that actually, I, to my mind, I think it's to their detriment when they do this, because what people will do is they will believe what they want to believe. And one of the questions about the demonstrations on Monday, for instance, was how large was this crowd? Sir Richard Dalton, former UK ambassador to Iran, said the current situation would most certainly stress international relations between Iran and the US. In the United States, clearly, it's going to be even harder to sell the idea of reaching an accommodation with Iran if Ahmadinejad were to be confirmed in power and for the general perception that this was done through dubious means to be reinforced. Uh, this has been well commented on, so I, I, I needn't elaborate on it. Uh, it will also boost the effectiveness of uh, Israeli lobbies uh, in the United States. How can you engage seriously with a regime that's as totally untrustworthy as this? So that's a, a further political constraint in the United States. Uh, in confronting it, I think the U.S. administration are likely to hammer home, well, what's the alternative? Uh, we've got sanctions in place. We can't uh, increase those substantially in the short term and we all know the limitations of, of, of the so-called military option. So I expect the Obama administration to be strong enough with democratic support to continue uh, in, in spite of these difficult politics. Relations between Iran and its neighboring countries would also come under mounting strain. In the UAE, interestingly, there is a large number officially registered, 110,000 Iranians. I would say the community there, given that many Iranians use Dubai particularly as a trading post, could be as many as 500,000. We have actually seen uh, demonstrations over the last few days. The UAE were quick to recognize Ahmadinejad's victory, but we've heard very little from them since. So I think everyone is now waiting to see and probably not trying to uh, rock the boat. The panel said the outcome of this complex and volatile situation would depend on numerous factors. Most significantly, the reaction of the Iranian clergy, merchants and security forces over the coming days.